We are live. This is 2OF Entertainment. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm with the man, the myth, the legend. There you go. How are you? I am well. How are you? I feel I feel better now because I'm back in the studio, as we like to say, or out outside of the studio, and I'm getting to have a cigar. Last week, because I was in New York in a hotel room, apparently it's frowned upon to have scotch and cigars in your room. The scotch part, I don't think they mind. It's the uh, the cigar part. If they if they stick at that, being in New York is going to be frowned upon. I know, right? So, well, it would have really. So, today, I'm actually smoking what I smoked two weeks ago because I enjoyed it so much. I'm smoking the 135th anniversary, verse the uh, adverse anniversary. My teeth come in next week. Um, <laughs> of the Oliva V. Um, it was such a smooth smoke. With the nice complex of flavors that I was like, you know what? I think I'm going to do that again. And then next week, I'm going to open up that box of uh, uh, Monte Cristos. Um, the the Estocks. The Monte Cristos And I'm going to try that live on the air. So we'll see how that goes. So if it sucks, it'll, everyone will know. And if it's good, yeah, everyone will know. And there you go. And um, I'm drinking, as, as always, today I'm using Centauri Harmony. Oh. So, Yeah. My great harmony, uh, you know. Well, I've coordinated my pocket square with the band on my uh, K Dorse, mm. uh, K Dorse 54 wide ring gauge cigar, which I'm beginning to enjoy. It's meant to be very creamy. It's meant to have that sort of like slightly peppery kind of. I'm not a peppery uh, uh, um, uh, flavor kind of person, but right. the creaminess is meant to be there. That should compensate lots of smoke. And um, I'm drinking this very ri ridiculously interesting rum I got this yesterday. Plantation. Plantation. Very nice. So, so now, now, it is now it drinks yeah, like a whiskey, to be really mm -hmm. honest. If I close my eyes, I would think it's a very, very smooth whiskey with a sort mm -hmm. of aroma of pineapple going on. So I've got a, a little bit of exotic thing theme very going nice. on. Today. Habano cigar. Got to be Habano cigar. Very well. um, uh, some I said I'm turning into a knob. Someone commented yesterday. What do you mean turning into? You're getting sort of like really, you're going really. Uh, yeah. Now, now you're just going all. Now you're just all uh, up just as being a knob. Yeah, so, yeah. Kind of person. There you go. Well, when I saw the bottle before the show and you said plantation uh, rum, I was like, oh, apparently we're going to be singing some working songs from the 1800s. Right. Um, you really? know, I, I was a little worried back then because I didn't know how this was going to go. Plus, it was Mel Brooks's Blazing Saddles, and I figured we were good. So, you know, it's always good to watch him a call. So, everybody, Saturday morning, or as David likes to call it, it's a Hollywood Saturday morning um, at 6.30 in the morning. So, cheers to everybody. Make yes, Make Believe make Saturday. Um, where I really am, it is 6.30 in the morning. So, cheers to that. So, and as I always yeah. like to say, this is my first drink in my left hand. So, cheers. There we go. And as I said last week, I've had a healthy pour before. Um, so, as I do the shows today and everything I need to do, I'm feeling no pain, which is also a good thing. <laughs> so, it's always a good thing. The drugs have kicked. You no, know, it's not bad. And my Oliva is always doing good. I love the Oliva family. Um, they, they always put out a good product. And I know it's a New World cigar, um, but I will say they do a good product. And they've been giving you shout outs, haven't they? Um, they've been doing it on Instagram. When we when yeah. we mention them, they give us shout outs on Instagram, which is very nice. Um, I want them to actually send boxes of cigars and stop with the shout outs. But hey, you know, we'll work on that. Um, and my Havana guy, I have three of them because apparently the uh, Chinese now are deciding that they want to learn how to smoke cigars. Communist bastards. Um, it's hard to get Cubans for my guys. So like I'm, everything I want is backward. So well, as soon as we Chinatown. Chinatown will be stocked and uh, ready with, with the problem with Chinatown is the, they're probably fakes. <laughs> so it's 50 50. That's okay. My guys, I have a guy in Hong Kong and I have a guy in Switzerland. Um, 
So as soon as they're, they get stocked up, they're like, we will get you out of your boxes. And I'm like, yay. So they're, I know it's going to happen. They're all going to come at once. Um, and I'm going to have to get more humidors. You're connected in all sorts of places. You're a useful human I, being to know when it comes I, to this. I, I'm a very, I'm a very useful human being as, as my, as our clients like to say, I mean, yeah. I, I, I know a guy who knows a guy fell off the truck. What can I tell you? So there that's you go. very old world. That's that, that that's in keeping with the with the, yep. what we're doing here. This old world. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, I, there's something. I, I think you and I spoke about it. But I was at dinner this weekend, and we were speaking about just old school and what that really is, and and how it is lost. An old school spelt S. C H O O L, as opposed to old school S K O O L, which is, that, as far as I think, a reference back to the early nineties. Old school. Yeah. No. No. Uh, we, we do. We do proper grammar. So yes, and proper spelling. But yeah, there's something. There's missing that gentlemanly. Um, everything about old school. Like I held a door, and this is why this came up. We were at dinner, and you know, I held the door for these girls that I didn't know. I'm just being a gentleman, and this girl like reaches for the door, and I said to her, I literally. You know, because I'm I'm shy. I said, "Are you an idiot?" And she just looked at me. I said, "Do you think I'm going to slam it in your face?" I said, "I am literally blocking the whole door for you, so you and your friend can walk in." And you're you're on the wrong planet. You you know I'm convinced. <laughs> you're on the wrong planet. I'm on the wrong planet. That Probably. world is gone. That world is gone. I know. We like to re reminisce about. It. It's gone, and but it's I, not coming back either. No, I it's know. Not I, but, coming back either. But I still do the old world school and um in new york we were at dinner with a group of people and when the ladies left left the table i would stand up when the ladies came back i would do the same thing and and all these guys are looking at me and i'm listening i'm like listen if you were born in a barn i can't help you like you know i was it's very much there's something to be saying about being a gentleman and have savoir faire you and bring to me, something to the table regardless of everyone else you bring something yeah. to the table that's you yes and that is true and i think unfortunately the younger generation um it's in its we at the Illuminati are going to blow up the planet in 2017. Younger, we don't younger. care, but if it wasn't, you know. younger generation, I know you're not that young. I, you know, you look good for your age. I mean, listen, oh. you knew the fair, you knew the pharaohs. So you don't know what's going on inside. <laughs> <laughs> good point. Good point. So today, my my esteemed colleague over here decided that we were going to do the best dressed people throughout history. Um. So a pro and a con to that. Is because, as he knows, I will dig and I will dig. I know. And, I'm confident, and I will, I'm confident I, you're going to find some emperor or king. Oh, or, yeah. Or some someone mm -hmm. beyond anyone's imagination will be pulled out, dragged back, and they go yes. to all this show. And I'm really excited about that because I love it when you do that. It's, that's totally, as far as I'm concerned, off piece. I'm kind of predictable. I'm, well, your guy, predictably so unpredictable. Yeah. But here's what's funny. the You're correct. I have an emperor. I have a king. And then I have somebody that just died within the last 10 years. But in the 80s Which and I 90s. I can guess. I can, before you name that person, I'll have a stab at that person. Okay. And but, uh, he was on the best dress list for many years before he passed away. And it shocked me when I found that out. So there you go. Turn me. Mm. Uh, are we sticking to protocol and you going first? If you would like, I'm okay with that. Let's reverse it today. Okay. Uh oh, there we go. Now because the, now the pressure. That on. we'll go the other direction. Okay. Well, when you say the other direction, what do you mean, darling? I mean, no. Well, um, well, <laughs> well, well. Once again, once again, I don't know how you. I really don't know how you do this. But that little throwaway comment leads me straight into my first guest cool uh if i thought now this is not necessarily best dress this is when you think of someone right, right. who's totally out there like okay. totally out there okay and you know that this person just in their being is a statement not necessarily a style i mean it's a style but you 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 will not this person will not not leave an impression at the table. Okay. Liberace. Oh, there was a guy. Yes. <laughs> and, and did you see your intro just caught it correctly? Yes, that is very there, true. There is no way that in the top 
best dressed or most flamboyant or most stylish. I mean, once again, not that I concur with that style, but it is a style. Right. The total bling yes. and garishness, which was cool before it all became garish, right. has got to be Liberace. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't think I've seen that guy dress it down ever. No. Even when he would be on the Merv Griffin show, mm. he would always be dressed to the nines or flamboyantly. And it was funny because I remember people would be like, is he gay? And I'm thinking, really? <laughs> I'm, I'm five years old and I know this guy's a $3 bill. Let's just be blunt. All right. A $3 bill. Wow. A $3 bill. That, that's an old reference. Um, but no, but I, I love Liberace. I would, we saw him in Vegas perform and it was just. You saw him. You yeah, saw, saw him. Liberace. I saw him perform on, yeah, back in the day. But that must have yeah. been about 100 years ago. How, how Liberace died in the 80s, did he not? No, that, yeah, that was, we saw him in the late 70s, early 80s. In Vegas? In Vegas, on stage. You know, that makes I'm you cool. That, that makes you already cool, but this makes you cooler. <laughs> I've seen, in, in Vegas, I've seen... Siegfried and Roy of, of old school, not the like I've seen still on all the new school, but the old school I've seen Rich Little. Um, we saw um, Liberace, Siegfried and Roy, you know, when they were the big residents with the white, with the white, like, with the white tigers, obviously. Yes, with the white tigers that would eat them. Um, I saw Frank Sinatra, but I didn't see Frank Sinatra in Vegas. I saw him somewhere else. But it, just to say that I saw Frank Sinatra live. Uh, well, well, was, well, Sinatra has to be a notable mention. Sinatra yeah. has to be a notable man. Yeah. Really. But uh, I agree, I agree. But yeah, so I've seen I've seen a lot of the oldies. I'm um, because I'm older than I look. Someone the other day said, "You look like you're in your fifties," and I said, "You've had a three, four, five, six zeros to that." Yeah, we're close. So you know, it was one of those things. So uh, we're good. Uh, yeah, Liberace. Steven, yeah, who Steven, yes, to yes. yourself, to your, ah, to you, my friend. Cheers. When we talk about when we talk about age and all this, right? The next thing is you find someone drops off. So. Let, let, let's just keep an evil eye off. <laughs> there you go. Cheers. Yeah, the, I have a few people I can drop off, but they're running for president. Anyway, um, so. Um, but I really like Trump. Oh, no. wow. There's a there's there's going to be a short that Vicky's going to find and put out for everybody. He likes Trump. Everybody watch the show. Yeah. Calm down, people. <laughs> I'm sure between the AI and between the live person that does our shorts, I'm sure that one's going to show up somewhere. Because anytime we mention Trump, our shorts get like 12,000 views because somebody sees Trump's name. They're like, what are they going to say? So he, he, li he likes Trump. And when he's talking Trump, he's talking the card game. But anyway, um, <laughs> there you so but Liberace, I, you know, he didn't even come to mind. Because I was going for like people that no, people are going to have to actually look up. But you, except for one person, but you went for, which I think is very cool. You went for like a 20th century flamboyant person. Yeah. That's like a RuPaul uh, when he dresses up. Uh, and I'll whatnot. be honest with you. When, yeah. Even when I said this out loud last, last week, mm -hmm. he kind of instantly dropped into my brain. It was like, it was okay. just like there was, how can you avoid Liberace? I know he hasn't so, been around for like the last 40 years, but. Yeah. That sort of uh, left an indelible ink stain yes. in the brain. Um, Do you know who else dresses well? And I'm not throwing him into the category, but I'm assuming he's not on any of our list. Tom Cruise. Every time I see Tom, yes. Tom Cruise. Yes, he does. Dressed. He does. Tom Cruise dresses extremely dapper. And I like, I mean, you know, for, and I mean, granted, he wears jeans and T-shirts like everybody else. But when he's in public for an event or he's on a talk show, he comes dressed you know what i mean he's not like these stars today that come in a, a t-shirt and jeans and it's sort of like what the hell are you doing i've noticed something about tom cruise only since i saw top gun two maybe three weeks ago four weeks right, ago. Right, right yeah yeah tom cruise doesn't wear sneakers oh maybe even with his jeans and right. t-shirt he wears boots that is a military thing but mm. i noticed he doesn't wear sneakers i mean there is a dress up I, and he's a king of cool. I think he's just as personality. He's the most confident and cool person, and he dresses that way. I think he wear anything yes. and look cool, but uh, he doesn't wear sneakers. All right, and he, he, trainers he, we call them. As I guess trainers. And the other thing which is interesting about him, he does his stunts. Like when he did the stunt out of the side of the airplane and did all that other stuff, I was like, I great respect to him. I don't know what he's like as a human being. He could be a dick, or he could be the greatest guy in the world, or somewhere in the middle. No yeah. clue. But yeah. I like when I see him his persona 
I enjoy it. Now, granted, he did the crazy thing on Oprah where he jumped on the chair. But, hey, you we were young. You didn't know. Who cares? But, I mean, or he told Matt Lauer to go pound salt. But at the end of the day, it was just something. I He's like a Steve McQueen kind of cool, if you would totally look. Agree. Yeah. You pulled that one out of the hat. Tom yeah. Cruise goes under the radar when it comes yeah. to yeah. Yeah. Really well and appropriately dressed for any situation. Yes. So, so Tom and a few of your people are listening, and I know you don't have enough fans, and you can get like six, seven more fans on our show. Feel free to come in, and we'll talk about your style of dress. Uh, there you go. So we'll invite Tom Cruise to the show. We invite everybody to the show, uh, and none of them show, um, which is good. So, <laughs> I haven't ever seen him smoking a cigar, by the way. So, but you know what? We can give him tea, and and he can tell everybody it's whiskey. And but I don't think Scientology smokes cigars. I think they only sleep with their sisters. No, I don't know. Um, I'm not sure how that all works. So I'm kidding. They sleep with their brothers too. Um, but yeah, so I, but Tom Cruise, I, I like, I like his style of dress. It's very, um, it's a very old world because he always has a nice pocket square. He's a always cool cat. A tie. Yeah. He's very cool. Like I said, he persona is in personal life. I have no idea, but the persona that I see, I like, so I, I will give him an honorable mention. Someone, uh, 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 one more honorable mention before sure. we go on. Uh, there's, there's too many. Keanu Reeves falls into that bracket for me as well. Keanu Reeves, yeah, he, he is, I don't know if it's marketing, he was always in a suit and, and t-shirt or whatever it may be. There's that, that theme is yeah. constantly, even on off time, up yep. time, dresses really well. Yeah, and I actually saw him at a restaurant in LA many years ago, and he was with his girlfriend, and he was like, he's a tall guy, and he was just slumped. He was sitting on a, um, they, they were at a table, and it was just us and them in the restaurant. And it was downtown LA, and his, he was just kind of like chill, like just like laid back in his booth, he, just talking with, just like, because he didn't care, because no one's there, right? So he didn't have to be proper, but he just, he, he was dressed like pretty much in like a t-shirt and a sports coat and his boots and his jeans. And the people I were with, like, look over and they go, that's um, Keanu Reeves. I'm like, okay. And like, what should we do? I go, nothing. Nothing. Like, he's eating dinner. We're not going to bother him. And then um, it was funny because I went to the loo. And as I was leaving the loo, he was coming into the loo. And for a brief second, I was going to say, I love your work. But I'm thinking to myself, you know, the guy's at dinner with his girlfriend. He's coming into the loo. I'm leaving the loo. I don't think he really wants to have a dialogue about the body of his work. And I'm like, so Tom if, or Akana, if you're listening... Love your body of work. Love your style of dress. Bumped into you in 2017, I think it was. You won't have a clue that you saw us. But that I remember. And I was just like, here's Keanu. Re and he's much taller in person. Um, I didn't realize he was very that that tall. And I was like, very cool. So he just seemed like a very nice guy. He was very nice to staff. And I was like, all right, cool. So I like that. I was nice. It was nice to see Keanu Reeves out like a person. Not like, you know, there was no paparazzi. His publicist didn't call people to tell him where he was going to be. He just went to dinner with his girlfriend, and I always thought that was the nicest thing. He so. wears black well. I think he mm. wears black quite a lot. Yes, he does. So, so, yes, my turn. My opening <laughs> gambit, Liberace. <laughs> what is your uh, counter <laughs> move, sir? Mine is a gentleman that lived in 210 BC. And, yes, it's going to be Quinn Shi Hong. It was, and for the people that are following at home and playing at home, it's Q U I N S H I H U A N G, Quinn Shai Hang. And he's the, the emperor who said was the best dressed and also the emperor who unified China back in 210 BCE. We're all going to have to go Google that. We're going to have to have to, going to have to look that up. Oh, by the way, by the way, by yes. the way, something I should have done right at the beginning. Yeah. If people are kind of enjoying this content if they find it titillating like comment and subscribe that's what people should be doing i'll repeat that at the end because okay. i like repeating it i'm your like comment and subscribe person there you go but so. but now we can add one word google like comment and subscribe because <laughs> some of the characters you come up with can yes, yes. only be found on google yes in fact we we talked about an empress on one of our shows, I forget her name. Um, and then we did that as a short, and that short got like, I don't know, 10 or 15,000 views. Everyone was like, ooh, yes, who's this short? Cool. Yeah. yeah. So, Quinn Shi Hang, I'm pronouncing it wrong. So, if you're from the Asian culture and you want to correct me, feel free. Um, 
but he's the emperor who unified China back in 2010 uh, or 210 BC. Um, and there you go. And was known as the best dressed emperor or he, best he, dressed? The, the best dressed emperor, the most flamboyant. I think in his day, he would be, I don't think his, I don't know about his sexuality, but his dress would be compared to a Liberace. Very well, flamboyant. Uh, the Liberace of old. So you, you predate me on my, um, on my Liberace move. There you go. Yeah, 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 yeah. I would love to show pictures of these people, but we'll have a discussion about that at some other stage. Yes, yes. That that requires David to sh David to be with us in the mornings, and I think soon David will be with us, and he'll be sending he'll be putting up the pictures of uh, of our of our people that we're talking about for dinner. As long as it doesn't violate, I don't know. I don't think he violates anything. I think he's in public domain. But I'm like some of these people because Getty owns everything. It's yep. got to be like, you know, we can draw a stick figure and go, look, it's a stick figure. Of that. So, <laughs> we can put Mickey Mouse up. Mickey I know Mouse he's put up. Uh, Steamboat Willie, I think, not Mickey. You can put Steamboat Willie, but not Mickey. The Steamboat Willie version. Mickey Mouse. Right, right, right. We can put him up, but we can't put the other one up. So there's my there's my counter to your Liberace. I'm going to have to come up with something a little bit dangerous thereafter. I see that. I will look at my piece of paper because I am suffering from mild Alzheimer's these days. Okay. Now, yes, I'm going to go for a best dressed, stylish woman, lady of real class at the table. Okay. And once again, I refer to my golden sort of target area, which is the movies. The movies from sort of 1930 all the way up to 1980. Okay. I will go for uh, an old uh, silver screen starlet. Okay. Who I don't think you'll disagree with me. Will bring style, panache, total beauty to the table. May West? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Rita Hayworth. Oh, there's a beauty. That's a beauty. Yeah. That's from crazy. Gilda, okay, the movie Gilda, right. where uh, which was which was played in Shawshank Redemption. If you remember, they go to the screening room and there, yep. and and Rita Hayworth looks up and all the prisoners go cuckoo, totally cuckoo, yep. and uh, that's actually where my Rita Hayworth journey started. Actually, I saw mm -hmm. her in uh, Shawshank Redemption, whatever it was, 25, 30 years ago, all and right. started watching Rita Hayworth movies. And I sort of like in the last six months, I saw Gilda. Mm. What I mean, I could have gone for a few starlets. I could have gone for Grace Kelly, for example. Right. Um, uh, I actually had Madonna in my head because when Madonna in the eighties was dressing up, she was different. Yeah. She was very, very, very cool. Yeah, but since but the no, facelift, I can't tell who she. Since is. the facelift, I can't tell if it is Madonna or a, or a substitute teacher. Yeah. Uh, and um, but Rita Hayworth. Class, character, yes. beauty, elegance. I think whatever she wore, she made it her own, made it look great. I had to put her in there. I like that. And you know what's really interesting? There's not too many stars, female or male today, that can do that. I mean, they all dress for the Met Gala. Even I can look good at the Met Gala, right? But there's not too many people that just, when you see them, you're just like, wow. Like, that's, like, boom. You know, seeing, like... Brad Pitt and George Clooney and a tux or Sandra Bullock dresses up or any of that. I'm like, yeah, okay. But there's no, they don't, it's just, they don't have, and I mean, I know they're big stars. It's just something they just, they're missing. I'm not sure what they're missing. By the way, Rita Hayworth, some sort of slight bias towards Rita Hayworth. Yeah, she yeah. was married to one of my fellow countrymen. I want to say fellow countrymen. I'm originally from Pakistan. Right. She was at one stage for about four or five years married to Prince Ali Khan. Oh, excuse me. I didn't realize. Yes. Yes. Prince Ali Khan, uh, the, uh, I don't know if you know the Aga Khan, his, his father, she was married to him for Ooh. four or five years. Wow. And uh, uh, there's a bit of, uh, you know, you do the history. I thought I'd wedge in yeah. some history for you there as well. Everyone go Google it if you don't believe me. I uh, believe you. Google it quick. Anyway, um, <laughs> quickly, there we go. tell the staff to do their job. Um, no, but that's for, see, I like that. I like that old, the sea, old world again. Old world elegance. Grace, as you put, Grace Kelly, Rita Hayward. Old world elegance, which is always had to have it. I, I, yeah. I, I don't think dinner is uh, dinner is complete without a beautiful woman at the table. 
Yes, I agree. I agree. Even I though would... many a time we we've not gone that way, but I, you know, in terms of best dress, I had quite a few choices. I went for. I was thinking of Joan Collins. Hmm. I was thinking of Madonna. I was thinking of Grace Kelly. I had a few sort of like starlets in my head. Right. Um, I mean, Lady Gaga as well, in some sense, is sort of like yes. a fashion kind of thing. But yes. I want to go classic. So ah, really yeah. worth it. Well, then uh, <laughs> you're going to like our next classic, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I did some to make you feel good for the country you live in. I figured I'd give you a king. King Charles II oh. is known for his flamboyish style. Once again, a Liberace type style. But King Charles II was known for his flamboyant dress. A dandy. A dandy if. Yes, he was. So, <laughs> I don't know how that bloodline keeps going. Um, but yes, so King Charles II, I was like, yeah, I, I read some stuff on him. And I was like, yep, you fit. You'd be fun to have at dinner. Him and Quinn, I'm thinking that's going to be an awesome dinner so far. Yeah, may, may I say something? Please. Can you say say your second guest's name again? King Charles II. God save the king. God, okay, thank you very little. So, <laughs> so yes, so, and and as much as Prince Charles tries to dress, um, from what I, from the pictures and from what I read about King Charles II, well, King doesn't Charles even come does. close. I mean, King Charles is, I mean, King Charles is impeccably dressed. Yes, all the time, and so he should be. He, but he is understated elegance all the time, and it's just. I mean, you know, when you have people like Kirby Allison, that's what they're trying to capture. They're trying to capture right. this sort of often used phrase, quintessential Britishness. Right, right. But who better personifies that than at this stage? King Charles. King Charles. And yeah. then before that, his father. Yes. Prince Philip. Uh, yeah. th these were the British gentlemen that people, yes. you know, dressed towards or aspired towards. So. Yeah. Great, great choice, King Charles II. Wow. Or I, apparently, honorable mention to Kirby because Kirby, every time I'm, I see him on his show, he is dressed to the, I want to say to the nines, but he is dressed like a proper gentleman. I don't think I've ever seen him out of a suit. Well, that's, that's part of the persona. That's part right. of the. I mean, I talked to his wife. She said she, when they make love, he's in a suit. So I don't think he's ever out of a suit. So I think that's just. Well, that's going to feature on a short, a 15 second short. Oh, yeah, that's going to be sure. Hi, Kirby. Um, so, yes, I'm sure the lawyers will be sending papers at any moment now. Send them so, over. Send them over. So, but yes, but Kirby always dresses well. So there you go. Um, I'm screwed for round three. Oh, uh -oh. hang on. Hang yeah. on, hang on, hang on. I'm screwed. I'm screwed for round three. I'm wondering if I've mentioned my round. Now, I've got lots of choices for round three. Oh. Uh, Cary Grant. Mm, very dapper. Prince. Ve yeah, but Prince was a different type of style, but I agree. It was just, it yeah, was yeah. just an explosion of everything. Yes. Um, I mentioned Joan Collins, but Joan Collins yep. is that elegant. I have landed for my third guest someone that we have mentioned before, but we okay. haven't had them as a guest. Ooh. Fictional character. Okay. This person I would like at my dinner table, right. and I would have to pick a certain version of him. Okay. And the version I would pick would possibly be Pierce Brosnan. Very nice. Yes, he's always. I'm well going fixed. for Bond, James yes. Bond. Yes. James Bond is my third guest. Okay. At dinner. Yes. Uh, bow tie, uh, tuxedo. But see, Daniel Craig dresses as a good James Bond, too. They all dress right. really well. I mean, Sean Connery with his narrow collar in yeah, Dr. Yep. No and exactly like you. But James Bond, I thought, as a fictional character, covers a hell of a lot of bases, whether it's a safari suit, whether it's a tuxedo, whether it's jogging bottoms, whether it's, right. uh, you know, uh, a dressing gown. James Bond does it. And I thought that covers a lot of bases. And I can't leave James Bond out, therefore. There you go. That's a good honorable mention. I like that. 
Very nice. Strong honorable mention. That is my third. Oh, guess. that's your James pick, Bond, James, James Bond. Okay, James Bond. Bond. All right. And uh, jury's out as to which one. I would, as I said, go Pierce Brosnan or Sean Connery. But then you know Roger Moore would do it as well for me. Roger I think Moore all in, of them. in a classic safari suit with the with the eyebrows. Here's here's the funny thing. I'll take every James Bond ex- except Timothy Dalton because just that James Bond didn't do it for me. Sorry, Tim. Um, but every other James Bond I've thoroughly enjoyed. I don't know if we've had this conversation before, but Timothy Dalton is the trained actor. Yes, that's why, because he's like a real, he's like a Shakespearean, um, everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you know who else would be fun as an honorable mention? Austin Powers. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that would be a fun guy at dinner. I think that would be good. Frilly shirt. Mm, pretty shirts. The ruffles, the ruffles and the, yes. the crushed velvet jacket. And just to hear him go, the yeah, baby. Ruffles. Yeah, huh? be like he's. It's you know he's like almost a dandy, but not quite. Yeah, baby. Not, yeah. Yeah. Right. He's almost a dandy, but not quite. So it's like I, I, what you call it? I, I like his style of dress. He's a Very, caricature of a dandy. Yes. Yes. But not because apparently he has sex with all these great women. So who knew? All right. So my last person just died maybe five years ago, but in the 1980s. He was on Johnny Carson, making fun of Carson because he was considered one of the 10 best men in the world for many years running in the 80s and early 70s. So let's see if that'll help you out. I've seen a lot of Johnny Carson. There's a lot and of he knew Frank Sinatra. He knew, for the, the, then, you know, you've got Don Rickles, you've got Sammy Davis Jr. Bingo. Don Rickles. Don Rickles. Don Rickles. Don Rickles, yeah, he died like literally in the last five years. Yeah, and Don Rickles was always considered one of the best dressed men in the world. Really? I never knew that. I saw an interview that he did, and he was busting Carson's chops. He goes, you're going to wear this. And he goes, just to let you know, by whatever, 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 I'm considered one of the 10 best dressed men in the world. I went back and checked, and he was. And he, like, for many years, because he always dressed impeccable. Yeah. And so Don Rickles had that old school, but he had old school savoir faire. Was he included in the Rat Pack? I don't think so, but he no. was sort of like a Rat Pack joker. He was like there on the outskirts because the Rat Pack, from what I gather, was Sammy Davis Jr., Joey Bishop, Peter Lawford, um, Frank Sinatra, and Dean Martin. If I'm not mistaken, that's, that's the Rat Pack. Yeah, that's the Rat Pack. Um, so he was there court jester he was the, he met sinatra and sinatra loved him and that's it and he said and sinatra would give him breaks and do things like as carson did and that's how he became don rickles because frank sinatra loved him he also went to um i i want it was either juilliard or one of the other schools where like jason robart and um gregory peck were in the same classes and he goes you know they don't talk about that so it was kind of interesting he was like came out from the military and was a heavy hitter. He was in that um, submarine movie with Gregory Peck. Um, or not Gregory Peck, with uh, Carrie. Oh, I can see him. Operation uh, Petticoat. No, you know, a serious, like, uh, Burt Lancaster was in it. Um, uh, the guy who does Judy, 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 not Cary Grant, but the other guy with the mustache, Carl Gable, was in it. Um, wow. And so, yeah, he was, a, he was a real actor before he did, you know, Bedtime for Bongo. So, uh, yeah, so he was, he did real stuff. And he knew Clint Eastwood. And, and, and he was in Casino. And he was what now? He was in Casino with yeah. uh, Robert De Niro. Which he made fun of Robert De Niro apparently all the time. Yeah, because yeah. he said, he said, Robert just mumbles his lines. He goes, oh, so well, it was this very funny. What we missed out because Robert De Niro in Casino was dressed. Yeah. Impeccably. Constantly impeccably. Yes. Constantly impeccably. Yes. And, um. I saw a documentary about the making of Casino once. If you watch Casino again, you notice that Robert De Niro's suits get more and more colorful as the movie progresses. Yes, yes. Which is to show that his mindset is getting more and more confident slash arrogant as he progresses. And every watch that he wore had a matching strap going on with the suit. Wow, I mean, it was at some different level. Yeah. Uh, did That's he get fashion. the suits? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. If you, some of those suits you don't want to keep. Some you do. So, you know, 
But I mean, that I was a good, well, if you really want to go after that, then you're going to go after like a John Gotti too, because he was a real mobster and John oh Gotti dressed in peckleton. Oh my goodness. How did Gotti slip under the radar of this one? He should have been my opening salvo, perhaps. Yes, that would that would have been no him and Liberace. That's a tough choice, but um, well, but Liberace, I mean, if you can't, yeah, argue, you got it. Yeah, but uh, Teflon Don. Yep, Teflon Don always dressed impeccable, and and the smile carried it. Yes, and he and he and he sort of had that fu smile, and <laughs> he was sort of like, "There you go." Did that have something to do with New York? I wonder. The smile or the dress? Both. The FU well, smile was there. The, the FU smile. Every, I, 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 listen, I'm from New York. We all have the FU smile, right? Because people are like, what are you up to? And the, <laughs> the dress is very, um, I think that was just his persona, right? He would get his two and $3,000. He wanted to be a movie movies. star. No, no. He, I, 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 saw, yeah. I saw the uh, on Netflix. Documentary. Yeah, the documentary. Uh, I think it's just Gotti or mm -hmm. Gink or something like that. Right. I saw that. Uh, I, have the, I have a little bit of a, a Gotti kind of obsession because I think, I think if you're going to be, if you're going to have, I mean, charisma, yeah, yeah. there is charisma there. It's not just the dress, dress sense. It's not just what he did. It's not just right. looking. I mean, it all comes together in someone yeah. who is just immensely confident. Yes. Do you know who else dresses well? Jimmy Carr, the comedian. Jimmy, Jimmy Carr, Carr is always very, in a suit. Very dandy. Yeah, yes. very I, I, And I like his humor because his humor is very much like mine. Um, it's very and I dry like, witted. Yes, and yeah. and I like that. But he always is dressed. I saw him on an interview the other day, and he was in his suit. And the guy said, "You like everyone's in sweats. It's like eight in the morning." And he goes, "Yes." He says, "But this is how I dress." And then I've seen pictures where he's with his, I guess, girlfriend and their baby, and because we stalk him, um, and he's still dressed impeccable. So he is. It's Good not boxing. just. A, Good yes, it's not a persona. It's apparently he does it all the time. But he also went to like a real school like Oxford or Eton or one of those. So, you know, I think that they, yeah, it's like they made him dress. So, but yeah, I thought that was very cool. Well, 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 well not, not to big myself up, but this is how I dress as well all the time. Even when I go to the toilet, I've got my jacket on. <laughs> I have my gentleman's gentleman hold my legs for my pants, one on each side so I can slip them in. Um, so, you know. It's just, it's much easier that way. So, but yes, we all, we all dress classy when we go to the Lou. So, and then there was like, I looked at Louis the 14th and Louis the 16th and they dress very flamboyant, but I was trying to think of people that people aren't going to think of necessarily. So of course, Don Rickles and the, and the emperor of China. And I figured uh, Prince Charles or yeah, King Charles, I thought was, uh, was good. And then Liberace, I, I can't believe I missed him. But some good honorable mentions, too. Not like, uh, whatchamacallit, not like we, um, there's a gambit. And if we missed you, and you're the well-dressed, like the lady who runs Vogue, yes, you're well-dressed, and you're this and you're that, but you run Vogue. What's the name? I can see her face. Uh, yeah, with that strange haircut and the glasses. Yeah, on. yeah, the bob haircut. Yep, yep. Ooh, go out of my brain. Yep. Out of my brain. So I like her, but it's just, that's too easy. Because you're in the fashion industry, you have to dress. Like, I don't know, at home you could be in a pair of sweats. and But, I mean, like, every time I see her out, she's always dressed impeccable. But, once again, I'm like, you run Vogue. You have no choice. Like, if I ran Vogue, I would always be in whatever, you know, 3000 and $4,000 and $5,000 suits every single moment. Because that's the persona. I'm going to mention an honorable yes. mention of perhaps someone who you might, you might think Rez has gone really off piste here. Okay. Uh, but for some reason, this person keeps flashing in my brain for not dressing necessarily really smartly or anything. But this okay. person is just constantly, to me, just cool, even okay. when it's dressed down. And this is very, very off piece, even for me. Snoop Doggy Dog. Okay. Uh huh. Maybe. In He's terms cool. of this. Hip hop, in terms yes. of this hip hop yeah. fashion, right, gangster right. gangster fashion, which which started in the early sort of late eighties, early nineties. Right, right. One of the, I, actually, Snoop Doggy Dog mixes. I mean, not he's not Snoop Doggy Dog. He's just Snoop, but yeah. he mixes it up a lot. Even where he's a tracksuit, there is there's a bit of bling, but it's not over bling. It, there is right. something there's something quite 
coolish about him. Yes. There's some people who've taken it to extreme, like big chains and all that. Yeah. Kind of he keeps it, in my opinion, he keeps it quite real. I like him for that. He just is, he dresses, a, and, and for lack of a better term, like a proper gentleman, even in his tracksuit. Even in his tracksuit, that's right. Yeah. And, and, yeah. and every time I've seen an interview of him, I've always thought, hang on, that's the kind of person, it, it wouldn't have occurred to me, that's the kind of person I don't, wouldn't mind hanging out with and yeah. smoking a cigar with. It's, it's right, that right. kind of person. So... I, I've listened to some of his stuff and it's like very cool, but I mean, he has his, his own podcast and they, they always say, do you want to smoke a joint? Cause he has his own uh, cannabis line. And I'm always like, you know, like if we interviewed him, it'd be like, dude, we're going to smoke cigars. You can smoke all the cannabis you want. It's just, you know, it is what it is. But yeah, no, you're right. He does. He has that, um, that, I think that he's, I think he's got in, in terms of the, that sort of hip hoppy genre, he's got mm -hmm. a bit of swagger in my opinion. Mm -hmm. He's, uh, He's overstated, understated, and I I don't know why I went in that direction. Maybe I've been watching stuff about Snoop. Right, right. I, I like I like the way he's always dressed, even though it's uh, it, it's not the way I would dress. But that's right. and he and he carries it off very well. That's why I want to mention him. Very cool. You know who I what I used to like? I used to like him in the old days, before the two thousands, when athletes, whether it was football, baseball, basketball, whatever used to dress in suits and ties going to the game. Yes, yes. But now now there's just a handful that, like, they still do that old school, look at me with the hat, the, the fedora, if you will. And, they're all yeah. and then the rest of them in sweats or jeans or what I'm like. I like that old school, we're dressing to go to the game. It's almost like when we were at school and we had to go and play an away game, you'd have to wear your blazer and your, and your to go and play. You had to, you had to be like diplomats right. in your school. And these people yeah. behave, or the, the, these athletes you're talking about, they have this sort of like, you're kind of representing a game, you're representing yes. your team, you're right. So, you know, you have to be on your, you have to look good. Yeah, and I, and I thought that was cool. And now they just kind of dress however. And it's sort of like, I'm like, yeah, no, if I was an owner of a team, I'd be like, listen, we pay you 50 bazillion dollars. You can afford a suit. Put a shirt and tie on. <laughs> yeah. I don't care if you wear a tie. Like ties. We had this discussion a couple of days ago with someone. I don't wear a tie so much anymore. Um, I don't. I wear a suit. I'm good with that. I mean, if I'm wearing black tie, that's different. But even a dicky bow, for those people that don't know, that's a bow tie. Um, but I've, I've learned now I, I can still be formal in a business meeting without a tie. I mean, granted, I have my shirt buttoned up. We want the top collar open, not down to my chest. But I still like dressing. But a tie has just gotten to a point now where I'm like, yeah, no, we're good. I mean, like I, I, I wore enough I ties. I dispensed with the tie on this one too. As well. yeah. I wore my I wore, I wore my own brand of t-shirt. This is sort of like mm. my Instagram. But I thought something different for a change. Oh, by yeah, the way, no, how's your cigar smoking? Now the Oliva, as I said before, this is I still have the ban on this time because I learned from the last time. This is the Oliva V, 135th anniversary. It is a smooth, I'd say medium to full body. And it's just like every other Oliva. It's just a beautiful smoke. It smooth is just smoke, lots of smoke, uh, a hit of aroma. A very smooth. One of those things where you're like, I like it. Uh, I think I think our aliens are here. I may have to go in again, like last time. So, and yours? How's yours? My K Dulce from Havana. Mm. Creamy, smooth. I didn't get the pepperiness. I'm just getting bundles of leathery and grassy smells i feel like i am sitting and marinating in a cuban cigar uh factory and nice. uh my clothes will smell of this which i love That's some yes. nice company. nice rum how can i go wrong nice company nice topic there it all worked out for me today Yep, I love it. It's that, and that's the best part of the show. So listen, you people in Cuba that uh, have the Havana factory, if you need us to come and do a show, uh, we're available for that and wedding and bar mitzvahs. So there you go. Sir? Yes, sir. Topic. Oh, I, uh, wait. Okay, well, hold on. I have my, we have our lawn mowing, our lawn mowing aliens here. So let me go back and I have to go in for the, like this part of the show and then come back out. Gorilla film. Rid of, yes, it's gorilla filming when the, when the boys are here mowing the lawn. So there we go. So what is our next week's topic? Well, it could be the following, and I take a lead from Don Rickles, which discludes Don Rickles from this. Okay. Our favorite comedians. 
Yes. Oh, that's going to be awesome. You now, know, Don Rickles will have open that. Yes. Now, I already now I already have one comedian in my brain, which I guess in the U.S. he's really well known. He died a bit young, but okay. I'm going to leave that for, ne for next week. Okay. Are you up for it, our favorite oh comedians? God. Are you kidding? I already have a list going through my mind. And I already know who I'm going to put. And I've got some comedians that are old, old, old vaudeville comedians. You see perfect rings. I'm blowing perfect rings right I see now. That. Look at you. I mean, you're like, you're... Oh. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, my dream is to go to one of these cigar sampling events, blow a ring that travels all the way across the room past people. And then just hits the wall and dissipates. Oh, I like that. It's very nice. It's very elegant. I, I must have seen that in one of the old MGM cartoons at some stage when I was about eight years old. And I just want to replicate that. Oh, very cool. All right. I like that. So next week, our famous, famous uh, favorite comedians. All right. I'm our favorite. Not famous. Right. Our favorite comedians. Favorite. All right. So I have my favorites already already in, in, in mind. This is going to be awesome. I'm looking uh, forward to it. A swift getaway because you are being inundated by alien lawnmowers. Yeah, you know that happened last time we did the show, but if they do it every other week, so next week there'll be no aliens. So when we're doing our favorite comedians, I'll be good. <laughs> so, and as we tell everybody, don't forget to subscribe and like if you enjoyed the show. It's here every Saturday, and you can also see you can see us on your podcast. You can hear us on podcasts um, wherever you get your podcasts. Just look for Tool Farts Making Noises. Um, for the podcast, and you'll find um, the Havana show along with our other shows. Subscribe and like there, or you can come here to YouTube and you can see us and talk to us. If you have ideas for a show, feel free. And if you're a cigar or a spirit company and you need um, us to be your ambassadors, why? I have no idea. But if you do, we're here for you, and we'll be more than happy to uh, smoke your smoke your your cigars and drink your your Scotch whiskey or your uh, your rum. And a shout out to the Habanos group people who yes. are providing these wonderful Cuban cigars all the time. And I'm still smoking them in London, despite the prices going to, to heaven. Yes, um, there you go. Great, great product. You can't really go wrong with the product. Um, yes. At every level. So, uh, and to all our Asian friends who are watching in China and to our Indian friends that are watching in India, welcome. Um, we are... We understand that you like the show, so we, we have a special stuff set up for you guys as well. Don't forget to leave your comments below, subscribe and like. Um, the shorts this week shall be interesting. So next week, everybody, yes, next week we're going to do our favorite comedians. Um, so that'll be fun. And that's it. We're done. It's been my pleasure, sir. My pleasure as always, my friend. We'll see you next week. Cheers. Adios.